in. Notice all the different announcements, a lot of things going on in the life of the uh, church. So you be sure and uh, look through it. I know uh, your body may be uh, thinking that it's uh, a different time. We uh, sprung forward, so uh, we'll, uh, you'll, you'll recover. So we're glad you made it to church this morning and not uh, still in bed today. So remember all the different announcements. Youth camp's coming up, so get those dates. You can see Brother Jamie, they're going to Florida this year. He's got a sign-up sheet. Again, if you've got any questions, Brother Jamie will answer those for you. Looking forward to a great youth camp again this year, uh, going with several different churches, so we're excited about that. Easter's coming up. Uh, April the 1st is going to be Easter, uh, so notice the date for the Easter egg hunt. They always had a great time, have a supper there on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, so if you can bring any candy uh, for the kids, we have a, a hundreds if not thousands of plastic eggs those uh, that snap together but we need a lot of candy to put them in so if you want to uh, bring a bag of candy just drop it off there in the uh, uh, the gym and we'll use that so remember that continue remember Operation Christmas Child uh, and the bread and loaves we appreciate everybody who gives to those so remember those uh, things several of you have brought your baby bottles in all that money goes to the Hope Center in Mayfield they do a great work and you can give your baby bottles to uh, Brother John our treasurer and uh, so uh, remember that. Of course, business meeting will be Wednesday night. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. The ladies have an activity on the 16th. Uh, so they're going to see the I'll, I'll, I Can Only Imagine movie. Uh, so you can see uh, Miss Heidi if you've got any questions about that. There's a sign-up sheet in the uh, foyer. And also on uh, April, there's a lot of things I told you. So get you a bulletin. Uh, not all of you read it, I know. But make sure and get one. Uh, the adults are going to go to the Ark and the Creation Museum. So the youth went a while back and they enjoyed it. So the adults are going to go uh, on uh, April the 19th and 20th. Brother Thomas is going to drive the uh, bus. Uh, and those are really good. If you've always wanted to go, you've got an opportunity to go with other people. So that sign-up sheet is in the uh, in the four years well. Of course, remember the shower uh, after church for uh, Mallory and uh, Lucas. So we're uh, excited for that and praying for them. So you remember that uh, after the uh, service today. Uh, this uh, Thursday makes 20 years I've been pastoring. Thursday, uh, 20 years ago, this past Thursday, the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church voted. Uh, I don't remember if it was unanimous or maybe had one vote against me, but uh, they voted to call me as pastor, so I kind of was reflecting about that. Almost preached a sermon on it, but we're doing a series, but there's some just a few things that came to my mind on the front of the bulletin this morning, so I thought you'd enjoy uh, how Baptists were in 1998 when I started pastoring, so that's a little article on the front. We're going to worship the Lord. The youth are going to help us today, so we're excited about our worship. So, uh, Brother Greg and all that's going to help you, y'all come this morning. All right, good to see you. You look, you look good this morning. Everybody's awake? In good shape? Let's, let's get ready to sing. If you would, stand up, and we're going to start out with a song called Open Up the Heavens. Show us, show us your power, show us, 
Show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Amen. Good start this morning. If you will, let's shake hands. Let's make everybody feel welcome this morning. <laughs>
sound good. You sound good. This one I know you know. Just a closer walk with thee. Let's bow now and go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. Bless the gifts that are given. Do it for our good, our very preaching hour, Lord. We pray that someone today that needs to make a move, Lord, that we take pride in hiring someone out of the way, Lord. Help them make that first step, Lord. Bless the ball.
All right, if you would, let's go ahead and, uh, and stand up one more time and sing uh, a couple more songs. We're going to start out with yeah. Great Are You, Lord. The next one's amazing. Yes, the next one. Yeah. 
I started out with Jesus at a very early age. Yes, I've known him nearly all of my life. Well, I admit there have been times when I faltered along the way, but I'll keep trying somehow. I've got to make it in. You see, I've got a charge on my life, and I've got a job to do, and I can't stop until it's through. I'm determined. I've got a make. waste criticizing someone else there are some things I'd rather leave behind and another thing and I don't have time to be bothered with he said and she said and they said cause it's all I can do to keep my own self in line Oh, Lord, I must work while this day, because I know the night is surely coming. I'm going all, all the way. Every day of my life, every day of my life, cause I've got heaven, cause I've got heaven, I've got heaven on my mind. I can't understand how some people can move so slow. Maybe they don't know just what time it is. Jesus is coming back, and I know it won't be long. I've got to be ready, I've got to be ready for my starry crown. I want to hear him say, I want to hear him say, well done. Say what you want to say.
Well, I don't know what the preaching will be like today, but at least you've had a good worship service. Amen. The choir did a great job, and the youth always do wonderful, and uh, we appreciate all of them and the uh, practice they spend practicing those songs and uh, giving of their time and efforts to uh, sing. The uh, young people, again, they do a great, and the choir did a wonderful job. We've enjoyed that, and I know you did as well. Amen. We're going to be in the Luke, book of Luke this morning, Luke 22, as we are preaching this series of sermons looking to Easter just a few weeks away of spending the last week with Jesus. What did Jesus do the last few days he was here on earth? He marches in or rides into Jerusalem on a donkey on Palm Sunday. We talked about that. That was in Luke 19. We're after Palm Sunday. Uh, One Sunday, he rides into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. The very next Sunday, he rises from the dead. It's it's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Those last few days, from Sunday afternoon of Palm Sunday to Wednesday or so, what was Jesus doing? He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to the cross. What did Jesus spend the last few days of his earthly life doing? Well, last Sunday we talked about he was in the temple. Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Teaching the word of God. Sharing the word with others. And how important that is for all of us. To try to share God's word. The sword of the spirit. The word of God with other people. Well, I want to show you something else Jesus was doing. Luke 22 and verse 39. Always try to bring your Bibles with you when you come to church. Luke 22 and verse 39. We find the Bible says, and again this is after Palm Sunday. It says, and he came out and went as he was walked. That old English word means as was his custom, as was his habit, as he'd been in the habit of, to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for each one that's here. Each family, each person, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful singing and that we've had. And each one, Lord, as they've been willing to, uh, uh, to lead us in worship. And Lord, we've sang along and we thank you for that. And now we come to the preaching of the word. Lord, we know your word is precious. Lord, your word can change our lives for the better. Teach us from your word, Lord. Forgive us of our, our failures, our sins. May the spirit and the word speak to every heart that's here today. In Jesus' name. Well, I want to tell you the second message of the last week of Jesus. Jesus spent the last few days, his last week on earth, he spent sharing the word during the day, and he spent time praying each night. What did Jesus do the last few days of his life? He was praying in the garden. Now, many of you know, Brother Ben, I know that. I know that Jesus, he went to the the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane. I I know that he prayed there uh, there right before he was arrested. I know that he was there with the apostles. We know that. But again, you look at that little old English word there, the word walked. Again, it's the idea of habit or custom. It tells us that it was Jesus' habit. It was his practice. It wasn't a one-time thing. Now, Jerusalem had 100,000 people in it on an average given day. But during Passover, and this is Passover week, during Passover, there were four million people that came to Jerusalem. I have a hard time a lot of times like you finding Becky in Walmart. Amen. How in the world did Judas get up and leave the Lord's Supper? Four million people in that town, and he know right where to find Jesus when he brought the Pharisees to arrest him. How do you know where? This verse tells us. Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, every night Jesus had been going to the same place. That's how Judas, he goes, he gets the the religious leaders, gets his 30 pieces of silver. He knows where to find Jesus. He knows Jesus is going to be up there praying just like he's been doing all week. He's going to be praying. Judas said, follow me. We'll find him on the mount. We'll find him in the garden somewhere praying. Jesus spent the last few days of his life praying uh, and that tells us that you and I we should do that as well it shows us the importance of prayer this wasn't something Jesus did every now and then Mark for, Matthew 14 says uh, that when the evening was came Jesus went apart to a, t- to a mountain to pray Mark 1 says in the morning Jesus got up before time and he went away to a place of prayer we find that during Jesus' life he always 
found time to pray. He goes to the Mount of Olives. Now in Jesus' day, this was up on a kind of a ridge. It was full of olive trees. The Romans cut them all down when they burned Jerusalem in A.D. 40. But it was full of olive groves and full of olive trees. Could catch the breeze coming in. They're kind of high up. and it, There was a cemetery to the side. It was a very peaceful, shaded, quiet, cool place. And Jesus sort of makes that his prayer closet. And every night he goes up there into the Mount of Olives. And he begins to pray. As busy as Jesus was against the last week of his life, he's just got a few days here on earth before he's arrested and crucified. But as busy as he was, he found time every night to go up there and pray. And I want to tell you, that shows us the importance of prayer. We often say, well, preacher, you just don't know how busy my life is. You don't know what i got going on. And listen, you may not have time for a sweet hour of prayer, but you should be able to find some time in your schedule. Jesus, sometimes he got up early, sometimes he stayed up late. It, it depended on what his schedule was like. But you should be able to find some time in your schedule where you can give God a few minutes to go to God in prayer and pour your heart out to him. Jesus, we find, what was he doing? The last, again, not last day, but days every night of his life. There the last week, he's going up there to pray. Well, what was Jesus praying about? What was Jesus talking to the Father? Well, we see some things here. For example, you look there in uh, verse uh, uh, chapter 22, verse 32. He was praying for others. You find in chapter 22 of Luke, verse 32, Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you that thy faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. He pray, was praying. He says, Peter, I've been praying for you. I know that you're going to deny me three times. You're going to have that temptation. But I prayed and prayed that you'd be restored. And Peter, boy, he messed up. He denied Jesus. But he quickly got right with God and got it right. And it was Peter who preached on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 folks got saved. Jesus was praying for the apostles. He was praying for Peter. What can you pray about? Sometimes people say, well, I don't know what to say. Preacher, I, I, I've got this time in the morning on the way to work, uh, my break time at night. I've I, I got a few minutes, but, but Brother Ben, I just don't know what to say to God. What's on your heart? Pray for others. Maybe during this time, and we're still a little bit in the flu season, the sick season. You know, the Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Pray for those you know who are sick. Those in the hospitals, those in the nursing homes. You know people in your church family, people in your regular family, people you know who have been sick. Pray for the sick that God would minister to them. We know uh, Jesus talked about how suffer the little children and forbid them to come for such is the kingdom of God. Pray for young people. Pray for our children in the church, the children in your family. Pray for the youth in our church. You can pray for young people. The Bible talks about, Paul said, uh, we should pray for kings and those in authority. Pray for, uh, we know heaven knows our political leaders need it, all of them. Pray for them that God would save them if they're lost, that God would give them wisdom to make the right decisions. Pray for the leaders in the church. I would covet your prayers every day. Pray for me. Pray for Brother Greg and Brother Jamie and Brother Matt and Miss Heidi, all of your Sunday school teachers, uh, uh, Miss uh, Lisa and Miss Jamie, all of those who play a part in our, our service. Pray for them. Don't say, well, I don't know what to say. When you begin to think about it, you've got so much you can pray for. Jesus, he's going the last night, and he's praying for others. He's praying for Peter, James, and John, and the other apostles. He's praying for himself. We know if you look down right below this, to verse 42 in the same chapter, Jesus prays and says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus is praying for God's will. He's going to the cross, and he knows how painful. Roman crucifixion was not, that wasn't their form of execution because it was fast, because it was quick. It was their form of execution because it was painful. Jesus knows what he's facing, and he is so praying. His prayer is so intense, the Bible says he began to sweat drops of blood as he's just pouring his heart out to God. And he's praying, though, God, I want to do your will. Father, if there's any other way for folks to be saved, for sins to be forgiven, let it happen. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You don't know what to pray about? Pray for God's will for your life. 
The Bible tells us, and you might want to write this verse down, in Jeremiah 42 and verse 3, that the Lord may show thee the way wherein thou shalt go and show you the thing that you may do. We should pray for God's direction, pray that God will show us what we should do and the way we should go. I'm going to tell you, pray for God's will. You know, oftentimes I'll, every now and then, I'll go back home to Logan or Todd County. I'll see all these group of boys I grew up with. We grew up with in middle school, elementary school. Man, we played ball and had fun. And, and all of them have stayed in that area. Married and they're, some of them are farming, some of them are working factory work. And they've all pretty much stayed where we grew up at. And here I am, way down here in the Jackson Purchase. Pastor and been court last 20 years, pastor in Baptist churches. And you know, I look and I, my life, I'd have been satisfied to stay in Logan or Todd County and to do whatever, whether it's farm or factory or whatever, to do something like that. that. I would have been happy. How in the world did I end up down here? Why would I, I do this and move way down here and, and give my years to pastor churches? Because I prayed and, and over and over I felt like that's what God wanted me to do. That was God's will for my life. You don't know what to pray about. Pray for others. But it's alright to pray for yourself. Pray, God, who should I marry? God, where should I go to school at? God, where should I, I work? God, where should I live? God, what should I do? Pray for God's will for your life. Jesus, and if Jesus did this, you and I can do this as well. Jesus is praying for God's will. And of course, I would tell you as well, he's praying for the lost. John 17 records a prayer of Jesus. John 17, verse 20, Jesus said, Neither pray I for these alone, his disciples, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Jesus prayed for the lost. You don't know what to pray about? Pray for all those people you know who don't know Christ. Paul says in the book of Romans, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Pray for the lost. Man, who's in your family that you know uh, that's, that, that's not saved? Who do you work with, go to school with? How many people do we know that, that don't know the Lord? We often talk about, and some of you will remember, years ago, Baptists used to shout. And people say, what took the shout out of Baptist churches? Prayer. We quit praying, and then we quit shouting. Over and over, I, I've talked to older preachers, and they'll tell me back in the Depression, and back in the 40s, and, and back in those days, man, most of the churches around were just little house on the prairie churches. Just one room a lot of times churches, maybe a couple of little rooms for Sunday school. And they said they'd have revival, and the men would get out, they'd find a grove of trees somewhere, they'd left beside the church for the shade, and the men would get over there under those trees, and maybe the women would get in that little Sunday school class, and they'd pray, and they'd pray for the lost in those groups by now. I've heard man after man, preacher after preacher it's done gone on to glory tell me these stories and they pray and the women would be praying for their sons their grandsons, their husbands who were lost and men are praying for them in those prayer groups by name and the men be out there under the trees praying and they was praying they'd have revival and that boy who had been wayward that husband who had never been to church would get under conviction would walk into the church and the preacher would preach the gospel and he'd get saved and boy, people say, praise the Lord. Amen, hallelujah. They pray, they'd shout and be happy. And you know what? If you started praying for your person you care about, and you prayed for them every day by name in your prayer closet that God would save them, God would get them right, God would work in their life. And man, you're praying every day, just you and God. You're praying for them by name. And you do that for a week, two weeks, a month, a couple of months. And all of a sudden they come to church and they get right. You'd get happy too, wouldn't you? But we quit praying. And we say, I, I just don't know what to pray about. Well, let me tell you what Jesus prayed about. He prayed about God's will. He prayed for others, his disciples. And he prayed for the lost. And people say, well, well, Brother Ben, I know that the Bible tells us to pray. Does prayer work? Is prayer, does it, does it work? Well, you look all through this passage. Matter of fact, you go back to Luke 19. In verse 46, Jesus said, My house is a house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. But my house is the house of prayer. Luke 19, 46. God has told us to pray. The, the Lord's house should be a house of prayer. And the Bible tells us over and over and over. James says the effectual 
fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James says you ask, you have not, because you ask not. Now you think about that. Now he says don't just, this isn't for praying uh, just for selfish worldly things, but spiritual things. You have not, because you ask not. Does prayer work? My favorite story, uh, one of my favorite stories anyway, y'all know I love Jerry Clyer. I've got every album he put out on cassette tape. Doesn't do me a lot of good today, Matt, but I've got them on cassette tape nevertheless. And there's one album he tells his story. During World War II, he was stationed on the USS Bennington, an Essex-class aircraft carrier, massive aircraft carrier, carried over 100 planes. And Jerry Clyer was there in the Pacific in 1945 when the, the Navy assaulted, with the Army assaulted Okinawa, the last island, before we thought we were going to have to invade Japan. The Japan, Japanese Air Force was down to hardly almost nothing, and they rounded up all the planes they had left, put pilots who could barely fly, and turned them into kamikazes. Put a bomb on there, and told those young boys, you crash into an American ship. Well, he told them, you find your number one target is an aircraft carrier. And they killed a lot of servicemen, crashed into a lot of, a lot of ships, and sank several. Jerry Clyer said he was there in March of 1945, in the Okinawa campaign. And he said one day the kamikazes were coming from all directions. And you don't just got to hit them. Those aircraft carriers, they guns on them. And, but you don't just got to hit them. They're going to keep coming. You got to knock them out of the sky. And he said, boy, the Marines were manning the guns. And Jerry with Clyer was there. And he said he was scared. He said, man, I was, I was scared for my life. These planes are coming in. And he said, I just knew they was going to hit us. And they're loaded down with 500 or 1,000 pound bombs. And these planes are coming. And he said, boy, I was just so scared. And, but he said, miraculously, every one of them either missed us or the Marines was able to shoot them down. And they crashed. He said, I was so scared. That was like March, I forget, maybe March 11th, 1945. They went on, and he said a couple weeks went by, and he got a letter from home. He grew up in Amet County, Mississippi, East Fork community. And he got this letter from home, and he said, in this letter, my mama wrote me, and she said, Jerry, we got together at church, and all the boys from East Fork community are in the service. And we decided on this special day, the pastor and all the church members gathered together for prayer that God would protect you servicemen. And it was the very same day that he said those kamikazes, they shot them out of the sky. Now, somebody's a critic or a skeptic would say, ah, that's just a coincidence. That's just a chance. And I'd say you go on and believe that foolishness if you believe that. But Jesus said, my house is a house of prayer. And Paul it tells us in James, all these, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You have not because you ask not. What would happen if during our time, Jesus is last week, he's praying. All the things he could be doing, he's spending time praying. As a matter of fact, I think people ask, did Jesus' prayer work? I love when you come to Acts 17. And the Bible says in Acts 17 that the church, verse 6, had turned the world upside down. Did Jesus' prayer work? Well, I'm going to tell you, those church, that church he started and the other local churches, they turned the world upside down. I'd say God honored Jesus' prayer. What would happen if you began to pray? And you began to find time. Jesus got up early sometimes. He got up late other times. He found, you found time. Don't say you had not got enough time. You found time to pray. And man, you're praying for God's will for your life. You're praying for your lost friends and family members, students, co-workers. You're praying for them by name with God. Man, you're praying for your church family. You're praying for others. And man, you're giving that time to God. Does prayer work? Well, the Bible says it does. History is full of examples of people who said it worked in their lives. Jerry Clyer said over and over it worked in his life. What about you? What would happen if we'd spend time praying? My challenge for you, you that are saved, you find time to start praying for God's will for your life, for others, for the lost. You know, prayer 
Jesus said, my house is a house of prayer. Prayer is kind of like a, a, a rope or a, a piece of wood on fire. You put more of them together, it's strong. A rope is a lot of little ropes put together. We pray together, and man, it's powerful. That's why we have asked for prayer requests, and we want to pray for things together. While the church is important, everybody needs to be part of a local church. And I would tell you this morning, if you're lost or you've gotten away, people's been praying for you. God's been dealing with you. Man, now it's time to come home. To not stay away, to not wonder, but to come home, to get right, to run to Jesus if you've never been saved, and cry out and say, Lord, forgive me. God, save me. God, work in my life, and God will. But you that are saved, Jesus said, I'm going to pray. My house is the house of prayer. Let's pray.